All right, y'all. Here we go. Uh, so we've had about 712 different Supreme Court corruption stories to this point. And I have another one for you. Now, unfortunately, uh, we've become numb to this. And the reaction is like, well, what do you expect? But that shouldn't be the reaction. If anything, it should go in the other direction. We should be so outraged and so pissed off and screaming from the top of our lungs to immediately do ethics reforms at the Supreme Court, should probably do term limits, should consider packing the court, should do what's called jurisdiction stripping or court stripping, which makes it so that, I know it sounds like that's like Clarence Thomas is like stripping or something. No, no, it's definitely not that. That's disgusting. It's uh, making it so that they can't do judicial review on certain pieces of legislation, and Congress has the ability to put that into some legislation. Okay, well, look at this. Wealthy executive funded Clarence Thomas's $270,000 RV. The more I read, the more I think, has this guy paid for a single thing in his entire freaking life? I mean, so many things. Harlan Crow was basically a sugar daddy paying for, like, his mom's house and a whole bunch of other things. And now we got another wealthy executive paying for his beloved RV. $270,000 RV. It's the price of a small house. The list of gifts and perks Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas is accused of accepting just keeps getting longer. Anthony Welters, a close friend and longtime executive in the healthcare industry. Wow. I'm sure that uh, this didn't come with strings attached. Funded, at least in part, Thomas's cherished $267,000 RV, according to the title history records obtained by the New York Times. Here's what I can share. 25 years ago, I loaned a friend money, as I have other friends and family. We've all been on one side or the other of that equation. He used it to buy a recreational vehicle, which is a passion of his, Welters told the Times in a recent statement. While Welters said the loan was satisfied, he declined to reveal how much he had loaned or provide a copy of a loan agreement, if one existed. You want to know why? Because it wasn't a loan, he just bought it for him. Welters and Thomas have been friends since before the justice took the federal bench, and Welters even reportedly named Thomas the godfather of one of his sons. Thomas did not respond to requests for comment about the RV loan from the Times. Earlier this year, a bombshell report from ProPublica revealed a real estate magnate, Harlan Crow, paid for Thomas's lavish vacations and his grandnephew's private boarding school tuition. The list is actually way, way longer than that. We went into it. By the way, to be fair, it's not just Clarence Thomas. He's the most egregious with it, but you had... All other um, justices of all different political variations have also accepted a tremendous number of gifts. In the case of Clarence Thomas, it is literally like he was being groomed to be a Supreme Court justice and then do the bidding of his donors because he was even getting gifts before he got on the court and then only continued and went up after he got on the court. And these are long-term relationships. There's this weird, there's this like shrouded in, in secrecy billionaire group that we covered in a different story that has him in it. And again, it's like a tit-for-tat type deal. And so this guy is an executive in the healthcare industry. Gee, I wonder if that impacted any of Justice Thomas's decisions. I don't know. Like, for example, when it came to ruling on Obamacare, when he wanted to slap the whole thing down, but we actually got lucky and all they did was make it so that uh, states can opt out of the Medicaid expansion. You remember that? So the way Obamacare worked, it was supposed to be a Medicaid expansion all across the country. Um, and it was supposed to be, you know, mandate you to buy private health insurance. Well, the Supreme Court stepped in and said, no, no, you can't mandate Medicaid in every state. The states need to decide to opt in or opt out of that. So basically all the red states were like, screw you. We're not going to expand Medicaid. Gee, I wonder if money or a giant RV that Clarence Thomas got from a healthcare industry executive, I wonder if that swayed his opinion one way or the other. Now, to be fair, his ideology is already like bad. You know, it was bad before getting all the gifts anyway, but it certainly helps when you have the tit for tat. You have the, the bribery, you have the I scratch your back, you scratch mine, you have the corruption, and then you also have the backwards ideology where it's like pff, slap down any sort of social safety net or any help for regular people. But look, the idea that the court is somehow above politics or beyond politics or incredibly nuanced or only goes by the plain face reading of the law, it's a farce. It's a joke. They are a deeply political body. Now, again, to be fair, it's political no matter how they rule, right? If they rule in favor of left-wing decisions, that's political. If they rule in favor of right-wing decisions, that's political. If they rule in favor of centrist decisions, that's political. They pretend, they do this tap dance like they're above politics, and their politics don't come into the equation. They just do the plain face reading of law. That is not true. There are activist judges on the right and the left. There are traditionalist judges on the right and the left. But everybody's got their own politics, and of course it influences their decisions. The fact of the matter is, they are not holier than thou, and they are fundamentally, descriptively, an anti-small-D democratic body. They are judicial tyrants. And when they overreach, there's consequences. So that's why now the court has one of the lowest approval ratings ever, and they only have as much power as we effectively allow them to have. Because as much as we have a, beef to, a bone to pick with the, uh, the legislative branch of the government or the executive branch, at least they're elected. And so...
we need we immediately need to make changes to how the court runs. Did you know the Supreme Court is the only court that doesn't have ethics rules? There is no code of ethics where they have they, they can't take these gifts, for example. There is no code of ethics. All the other courts have it. They don't have it. Well, that obviously shouldn't be the case. Give them a code of ethics. Give them term limits. Consider packing the court. Do jurisdiction stripping when necessary. And let's change this because they're already... Their approval rating is already in the dumps for a reason. Because they're a colossal, corrupt body, and now everybody's catching on to it. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.